So I'm Jude Faultless and my business is Faultless Copywriting. So I'm a communications consultant. So I work with businesses right the way through from creating a communication strategy. So that's basically, you know, that you want to get a certain amount of sales, but which customers are going to be buying from you in order to achieve those sales. And I do the content strategy and planning and then the, the copywriting delivery of it. So that's sort of what I do. And today I'm talking about how to create digital content. And I, I came to all the sessions yesterday and I was really struck by the fact that literally every single session talked about the importance of content. You know, whether it was Julia on, you know, how to be fit for online or Ian on what makes a good website and Steve on SEO and Lisa on engagement on, in social, content cropped up again and again. And I know it's one of those things that we, we know we need it, but we don't quite know what it should be. And it's, it can be an enormous time drain if we don't get it right. So I really wanted to talk today about how you can generate really effective digital content. Um, and really looking about how we create content that's unique, engaging and relevant to your customer, because if it is not unique, engaging and relevant to your customer, it's a complete waste of time. Um, so, you know, we really need to make sure that we're doing that. Um, uh, content that lets your customer get to know you, like you and trust you, because especially for services, we don't buy unless we know, like and trust somebody. That's what we're looking for. And if you think about the people that provide you with services, you know, whether it's the the garage that does your car's MOT or your uh, cleaner or your babysitter or whoever it is, if you know, like, and trust them, it'll take you a, a crowbar for you to go to somebody else because it's really valuable when you know, like, and trust somebody. So you're trying to build that up all the time so that people will buy from you. It's really important. We know that our, our sort of presence on social media needs to be social um, and not selling. But obviously we're not on social media for the good of our own health when we're there from a business perspective. We are there to try and drum up trade in some kind of a way. So how do we do that without selling and, and making sure that we are always social? So we know it's very alienating when people are constantly sell, sell, selling. So how do we create content and a, a presence online that is a sociable one? but also um, is one that is designed to you know, um, bring in um, customers. Um, and we want a process really that will save us time. I, I cannot be the only person who sat in front of a computer with a, an empty status update thinking this will take 10 minutes just to whack something on, you know, out on LinkedIn and then an hour later I'm still there because um, I'm not quite sure what to say. It can be an enormous time drain. We don't realise how much time it takes up. Um, so we need a process that will help, that will save us time. But also, I know for a lot of businesses, we're trying to work out what we can and, ca and can't outsource because we can't do everything. Um, and outsourcing social media is one of the things that you can do and outs outsourcing content generation for that matter is something that we can do, but only if we have already done the thinking behind it. Um, so there's, a, the, there's an element of work that has to happen within the business before it can be outsourced, but if we do that, then that becomes much easier. So, um, I wanted to really start by saying that, you know, our job is not to be selling. Um, which is good news because I don't suppose any of us really got into this in order to be salespeople. You know, if you start up your own business, it's because there is something that you are really good at or really passionate about or really want to do. Um, you don't really want to be spending two thirds of your week selling. Um, and I think the good news is that you absolutely don't need to and shouldn't be. Your job is not to sell. Your job is to help your customer get so clear on their problem that you're the only person they want to buy from. So it's a shift in thinking really so that actually your job on social media and with your content is to be helpful. You're helping your customer get clear on their problem um, so that um, you're the only person they want to buy from. So what I've got here is a typical sales funnel, a really very basic sales funnel. This is a sort of sales funnel they were talking about when I was at university a few decades ago. There are more complicated ones, but you don't need anything more complicated than this. This is just a buying process that every customer goes through, whatever they're buying. So, you know, if you think about anything you've bought, you will have gone through this process. You will have become aware you had a problem that you needed to solve. You'd be looking for a solution. You become interested in the different, you know, your different considerations, what it is that you actually need, then you, you start seeing what it is that you want to buy and start looking at the competitors and then you buy it. So you go through that process of, I'm aware I've got a problem, 
I'm interested in a solution, I find the one that I want, and then I buy it. And that will be true for your product and for your service. So understanding what process your customer's going through means that you can talk to them at every stage of that process. And obviously this is a funnel. There's lots of people at the awareness stage and fewer at the action stage. So if you're talking to people at that awareness stage, you've got far more people to influence at that stage, to be talking to them right the way through that, that buying process, rather than only talking to them at that sales moment. So um, it just gives you a much better chance of building up a sales funnel if you're talking to your customers right the way through that process. So if we look at each of those um, uh, processes in turn, at the beginning of this process, your customer is aware that they've got a problem to solve. And this is probably a new problem. You know, what happened yesterday that changed that means that they are now your potential customer? You know, for example, if I, um, if my car fails its MOT yesterday, then today I'm in the marketplace to buy a new car or a secondhand car, or whatever. But yesterday I was not a potential customer for every used car sales de dealership in Kingston. Today I am. Something changed. Um, you know, if I'm a VA, why is somebody looking for a VA today when they weren't yesterday? What changed? You know, did they get so overwhelmed with their admin that they lost a good, you know, that they, they, they lost a client or they lost a deal and they were in the, awake in the middle of the night going, this can't go on, I need to solve the problem. Something has changed that means that yesterday this person was not your potential customer and today they are. And you need to understand what that is because they'll start then looking to, to buy. Now, in the example of a car, if you come up to me now and say, I'll sell you um, a 2015 Mini for £15,000, do you want it or not? I can't possibly buy it from you at that moment because I know nothing about the cost of cars because I haven't started doing any research yet. I don't know whether £15,000 is a lot or a little. I don't know anything about that, that car at all. So I'm looking for information at the beginning of my buying process. Now, 30 years ago, if we'd been, you know, uh, buying a car or buying a kettle or buying a TV, we'd have gone to the car dealership and talked to the expert. We'd have gone into John Lewis and asked the, the sales assistant what telly we should get. We'd have gone to Curry's to, to, to research kettles. But now we do it all online. So we start looking for that information online. We'll be, what are, you know, what does your customer Google on the morning they wake up going, I've got to solve this problem? What information can you give them to help them get their head around the problem that they're trying to solve? How can you help them at this stage? Um, so after they've sort of become aware of, um, uh, they sort of move through this awareness stage, they, they're getting their information, they're like, okay, I think I understand what it is that I'm Look at their own considerations. So. Um, this is the point where the customer is sort of weighing up their options and trying to work out what's right for them. Um, and at this point, you need to sort of educate them on what those considerations are. Um, because not every customer is the same and not every customer's needs will be the same, but they don't necessarily know that. You know, if, if I see that my brother's just bought a car, am I going to get the same car? I might as well. He's done all the research. I might as well go and buy the same car. But he's bought a car with great fuel efficiency because he drives 400 miles a week. I don't need that. I need something different. I need a, 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 a run around, you know, for because I'd never leave the KT postcode. I had different considerations to think about. And I need to be educated in what those are because I'm not an expert in this industry. I'm not an expert in cars. I need to know what those considerations are. Now you all know that. So if you can help me at that stage and go, think about this, think about this, think about this, you know, for your industry, what are the things that your clients have to think about? You'll help them get really clear on, oh, okay, this is important for me. That's not important for me. You know, I, I should pay a bit more for, the, for, for, um, for this spec. Um, but this is not so important to me, so I don't need to pay for that. You know, there will be those sorts of considerations for any industry, for any service, for any product. If you can break those down for me as a, as a buyer, you're really helping me get clear on what's important to me and what I need to value. So once I've kind of worked out what it is that I need, I'm sitting there going, like, oh, okay, I've got this now. I can absolutely see what it is that I need to buy, but I'm suddenly overwhelmed <laughs> by all the choices that there are 
out there, you know, in terms of your competition. There are loads of people that I can go to that I can buy from. Now, because you've informed and educated me, you're on my radar because I've, you know, I've, um, I've been looking at your social media posts. I've been reading your blogs on this. Um, but how do I choose you over the competition? You know, and this is the stage where you really need to inspire people with who you are as a, as a brand and as a company. Um, now, some businesses are incredibly visual and they lend themselves very nicely at this stage to beautiful pictures. You know, if you're an interior designer or a chef um, or an artist or a photographer, you know, you've got lots of beautiful imagery where you can absolutely show people what it is that you do. But if you are a communications consultant, it's a little bit harder. Um, but, you know, this is where testimonials come into play, where um, client stories come into play, where I can really talk about what I care about, um, what matters to me, where I can really show up and, and give pe get, let people really understand who I am. And I would say at this stage, it's really important to show up. We can sometimes feel a little bit... Um, nervous about bringing our whole personalities of what we do to uh, online we can slightly want to hide a little bit behind the screen but people need to get to know you they want to get to know you they can't buy from you unless they've got a sense of you so uh, this is the point at which you need to show up and start showing who you are what you care about what your passions are um, i say this quite a lot with about pages on on people's websites you know, I have people saying to me, well, you know, do people really need to know this about me? I don't want to talk about myself too much. It's absolutely, if you're a one man band and people are going to buy from you, they will click on that about you page because they want to know who you are. They're trying to get a sense of you. So if people are going to know, like, and trust you, you have to give them the opportunity to do that. And it's far better to have 10% of people go, you are absolutely the right person for me, than to have 100% of people going, no, nah, okay. So being bland is is um, is risky. I would say you're not giving people the opportunity to choose you, um, and it's far better to have a small number of people absolutely want to go with you than to have nobody be that bothered about you. So um, worth really showing up at this stage and inspiring people with who you are, and let people choose you because then you'll, you'll get the customers that you really want at that point because they'll be right for you. Um, so this is a real opportunity, both in terms of your social and in terms of um, any other communication that you do, bring who you are and what you care about to the fore. So once you've gone through this whole process of informing, educating and inspiring your customers, well, then they're ready to buy and they can choose you. Now, they might not choose you, but they can choose you. But to be honest, at that point, um, you've given them all the information you possibly can and, and the decision is in their hands. You can, you can lead a, a horse to water. At that point, it's their choice. But you'll notice that when you're informing, educating and inspiring people, that's all a social interaction. So none of this is really about selling. It's all about helping. Um, at, at all, all the way through this entire process, all you've been doing is saying, think about this, think about that. This is something that you need to know about. This is something you need to consider. Um, this is what I really care about. This is why I got into business because I think this really matters or that really matters. All of this is a social interaction. So at no point have you been um, going in for a hard sell at all. So all of this belongs on social media because it's social. Um, and that's the way that you will engage with people. You want people to stop scrolling. Well, the minute, uh, you know, uh, the minute you start solving problems for me, I stop scrolling. If I'm trying to solve a particular problem and you're suddenly posting about, think about this when you're trying to solve this problem, I will stop scrolling and read what you've got to say because you're helping me. You're not selling to me, you're helping me. So that's how I will engage with you. So that's the theory behind it, but how do you actually put that into practice? Um, and this is a, um, a process that I go through with businesses quite a lot of actually digging into the nitty gritty about what your customers' problems are at every stage. So if you go in, if you fill in a chart like this, um, an Excel spread, this is basically a, a sort of um, mini screen grab of, a, of an Excel spreadsheet that you could put together for your business. If you go through this and say, okay, at the awareness stage, if I sit in my customer's shoes, 
What are the questions that my customer is asking? What are they Googling? What's changed for them today that means that they are online starting to do their research and looking for information? What are the five things that they, they might be Googling? What are my different, what customer, what are my customers Googling? What, what help are they looking for? And what is my response to that for my industry? What is my response to each of those questions? Every single one of those answers is a blog post or a social media update because they are responses to genuine customer questions. And if you don't know what those questions are, then ask one of your customers what the, how, where they started in that process. What were the things that they were Googling? And your response to that is going to be naturally SEO friendly because you are responding to what people are putting into Google. Um, it couldn't be more SEO friendly. So listing all those questions, listing your response to those, that is all absolutely, um, that those are all posts and blogs, videos, buying guides, helpful things that you can give customers at that point about how your industry works um, and the things that, um, the information that your customer needs. Then at the interest stage, what are those considerations? For each of your customers, what are all the different considerations? And every single one of those considerations is a social media update, um, is, a, is a video that you could record um, to put out on LinkedIn or Facebook. Um, and they are absolutely relevant things. Those are the things that your customers are looking at. They need to know, they want to know. Um, and then again, at that desire stage, they've got a shortlist. How are they going to choose you? You need to inspire them with the idea of what their life will look like once they have worked with you. So imagery, opinion pieces, thought leadership, testimonials, case studies, all the sorts of things that will really help build up who you are. This is where you show up. Um, so this is how this is this is where customers will start to go. Okay, I really see who you are now. Ah, oh, that's what you think about that. Ah, oh, that's really interesting. I hadn't thought about that. These are the these are where you really start to put the meat on the bones of this is the information and, and that you need. But this is who I am. This is what I bring to the party. So this is a really useful um, place to start talking about all the things that you're passionate about with your business. And also, you know, this also belongs, you know, on your about page um, about the reasons why you got into business and what you really care about. So all of that will generate content for your business. And what I tend to find when I do this process with businesses is that it flushes out so much information. It can be a really rewarding process. For the most part, people are talking about 10% of what they know, 10% of what they've got to share. And actually, when you go through this, you flush up and, oh, I could, I could talk about this, I could talk about that. Oh, I've got loads on this that I could say. Oh, I've written about this before, I could talk about this. There's loads of stuff that you know, but you haven't realized, because you haven't properly interrogated every single question that your customer's asking, that it was useful. Um, and if you've got content that isn't answering a customer question, is it useful? You know, so it's, it's a good auditing process to go, what am I actually talking about? Is this of any interest to my customers? Because if you're writing stuff that isn't responding to a customer need, then probably you're wasting your, your, your time. So it's a good way of auditing um, what you're talking about. So um, this process is really just about saying, absolutely, what does my customer need to know? Am I making sure that at every stage I'm answering those questions? And when you do that, whereas your customer is scrolling, 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 if you're, if you're solving a problem for them, they'll stop scrolling and start reading. And that gets you on their radar and, and means that you are helping frame for them their problem, helping them get so clear on their problem that when they come to buy, you're the one that they choose. Um, and so that basically means at the end of that, when you've created digital content, is it unique? Absolutely, because it's all about you and your response to customer need. It's engaging and relevant to your customer because it's totally geared around their, them trying to solve their problem. Um, it's letting your customer get to know, like and trust you because you're sharing what you feel and what you think about um, your industry. It's totally social because it's all about being helpful. It's not about selling. And once you've done this piece of work, you've got your list of, you know, you're, it's almost impossible to go through that process and not come out with at least 10, if not 20, really good pieces of content out of that process. And then you've got that list that you can work from, you know, all the way through the year, you absolutely have a list of the fundamentally useful things that you have to talk about. 
Um, so either that will save you time or you now know what it is that you want to give to a VA or a social media manager or a blog writer or content creator because you know what the valuable things are that you want to be talking about. So that's really my how to uh, generate digital content really. So um, Forbes, I'm not sure whether we're going into session 